This is a comment from Dustin Hong. Dustin Hong, something like that. Anyways, it says, bro, I've been following your training journey the past seven years. I appreciate it, Dustin. Thank you for doing this Patreon and for providing helpful insight to fellow lifters. I intuitively felt in sync with Bulgarian style back in 2013 to maximize my powerlifting total. I've switched, wow, seven years ago. I've switched to conjugate style training for the past two years and managed a 525 low bar squat, 305 bench, and 640 conventional pull. My lifts have completely fallen 50 to 150 pounds from this current cut. What did I say? I told you guys. I mean, here, here's some good proof from Dustin. You're going to lose a lot of strength when you try cutting. Uh, I've read that you're more into 10 rep PRs while cutting, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll break this up as we go. But yeah, because if, you, if you're if you trying to cut, lose weight and all that or whatever, get shredded and lean, like your shrink's not going to be there. Doesn't You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter how clean you eat and stuff. Like you just you just have less. You just have less ma mass moves mass. You just have less mass to move mass. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. So yeah, I mean, in order to keep yourself driving yourself crazy, by all means, you should just switch up the rep schemes because like you're going to have more fun that way. Um. And even when you're big guys, you know, this leads me to another point too. Like I've reached a point where like, <laughs> so for instance, like conventional dad, 700, trap bar dad, 910. You know, I tried getting 920 the other day. You know, all these things, it's just like, it's such a big task to try to one up that. And it's not even like the strength, the strength probably is there, but it's more so the fact of like, um, mentality, like, oh my, like, Anytime there's doubt, you're not you're not gonna be able to do it. If you're doubting it, you're not gonna be able to do it unless you're like 150% able to do it. You know what I mean? Like if your mind is telling you you might not be able to do this, you're probably not gonna get it. And that way, just switching up reps. Like I'm gonna start doing trying to get two rep maxes from now on because I've never focused on two rep maxes. I've always focused on like one or as many as possible with a lighter weight for the most part. You know, or like I said, you know, three or five, but like I've never really focused on getting two rep maxes. And I think it's the better way to go too, because say maybe you're not a hundred percent today, but you go for the two rep max and that first rep is absolutely brutal. Well, then, you know, you shouldn't go for the second one, but like, it's like if you're going for one rep maxes, then you could be trying to grind it out and you don't get it. And you're just, your form broke down and you know what I mean? Like there's a, uh, if we're going for a two rep max, there's a better chance of success or at least like failing but not really you know what i mean because even if you fail you still hit a rep and you could tell that you wouldn't be able to get the second you know what i mean like as opposed to just going for an absolute one rep max and form breaking out or maybe you don't even budget you know what i mean it's just there's no worse feeling than your that's your main goal for the workout and you can't even budge your main goal and then you're like man this workout just sucked but it's not true because even like if you think about it like if you're trying to deadlift a huge PR and you've, you broke it off the floor, you got it above your knees and you just couldn't lock it out or something. That's probably still more weight that you're holding like a static position. You know what I mean? Like if you just got it off that much of the ground, like that's still progress. That's better than nothing. Or if you're just shy of lockout, like have you ever done that weight before or just shy of lockout? No. So it's still an accomplishment in its own right. I feel like we do sometimes let our egos get the best of us. And like people call certain things ego lifting, like, oh, we're lifting for one rep is ego lifting. Listen, everything we do is ego. Everything's ego, right? <laughs> everything's ego. People that try to lift with perfect form is ego that they want to lift with perfect form. You know what I mean? Like, but I feel like sometimes it's just, it is ego to like that you have to finish a rep. You know what I mean? Like if you've never picked up, like if you've never benched 315 before, and and you're in the gym today, like today's the day I'm gonna hit 315. And you know what I mean? And you you control it down to your chest and you get it like three quarters of the way up or something, or whatever. You get it to your sticking point, because three quarters of the way up, who's gets stuck there? No one, right? <laughs> but you get it halfway up and you're grinding and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing, but you can't get past that sticking point. And then everyone's like, oh shit, I can't believe it. Oh dang it. No, oh. no, but it's like, dude, you still you control the weight down, you got it halfway up, and have you ever done that with 315 before? Probably not, you know what I'm saying? So it's like everything's a, a win in one way or another, it's just how we view it, it's like we have to complete the rep, and like that's what I'm saying. 
it's almost ego in that regard. Like, it, or it is ego in that regard because you have to finish the rep, right? So you can upload the video and people can like it and you get views on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all ego for the most part. <sighs> Anyways, just a little rant there. Um, okay. So yeah, one of rep maxes just need that perma bear bulk life. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, the bigger you are, the stronger you're going to be, right? I'm ready to bulk again. And we'll be training with your style of training for minimal movements. I see that's the key. It's not like you have to train, you know, for one rep. Like I said, I changed up my reps, rep schemes all the time. And now I'm going to start doing two reps just because I have never focused on it before. But it's the specificity. It's the minimal other movements, the minimal accessories, if any, really. Um, geez Louise, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, minimal movements and be selfish in how I enjoy my training with some heavy ass weight. I do think, however, minimal accessory movements in I say if of say one set in reverse hypers, glute ham raises, sled drags, pull ups, back extensions, and bamboo bar presses sprinkled in throughout the week are key to stay injury free. Thoughts? Yeah, I would agree with that. That's not that stuff's not going to hamper your recovery that kind of stuff's gonna just prime you up right like especially like um glute ham raises and like back extensions and stuff like do that before you get into your lifting get those muscles really like activated get your hamstrings kicking and your glutes kicking or you know your bamboo whatever just do a few sets of that get stabilizers and then you go to the barbell and it feels so much easier and then after you're done with the bar maybe go finish up some working sets with the bamboo bar or, you know what i mean things like that but that stuff's not going to kill your recovery um, it's when you're doing like, the stuff that kills your recovery is like, oh, I just, you know, I just, um, I just benched and I want to get my bench bigger. But then afterwards you're doing like incline bench and then you're doing overhead press. And it's like, that's too much. If you just want to get big bench, just focus, just keep your eyes on the prize. Just the bench, the flat bench. Um, looking forward to watching the insane, my insane lifts, and they're not, you know, I don't consider them insane. It's just insane mindset, but not the lifts. Uh, if I hit a 700 pull, <laughs> pull with this style of training, I'll definitely give you a shout out. Thanks, bro. No, oh, thank you, Dustin. And then he continues here. I'm thinking of doing a daily squat variation that attacks the weakness daily. For me, I'm weak after coming out of the hole. High bar squats, belted and unbelted, safety squat, bar squats, and a ton of pause squats, both high and low with deadlifts. You're weak with the lockout. Uh, three to four times a week with slight variations such as deficits, snatch grips, pulls against bands and chains, and regular deads. Uh, bench, I'm thinking of hitting up weaknesses, lockout, and tries every other day with close grip, Swiss bar bench, bench against bands, floor press, against chains. I know you mentioned that you prefer focusing on only one movement, but how about a bench press variation max followed up with, say, one set of five to 15 reps of jm press um with the safety squat bar well i've never done it with the safety squat bar but yeah uh no nah, i mean one dude one set yeah by all means that's not going to kill anything that's not going to kill your progress and i i even like to do stuff like that too like if i'm benching for with like a, a swiss bar for instance then if i'm doing like, like a back offset or something i'll strip it more and i'll just do yeah some jm press like why not that's that's not going to hurt your recovery you know, it's like isolation work, basically. Uh, I'm thinking about hitting up, but it's not a ton. That's the key, right? The the ton is when you do six different isolation exercises. Uh, I'm thinking about hitting up delts with an overhead press of some sort and a pull-up variation. Uh, yeah, I do pull-ups. I try to do pull-ups every single day. Um, just one set for each for a second workout. Is it too much or should I scale it back? I mean, one set, really, I mean, like one set, I would almost look at that as what's the point, right? Uh, I would just take a day, maybe just do a, like a day or two days out of the week. Do your specialized movements, right, with minimal accessories and then take a day or something to hit all the, you know, the fun pump stuff, whatever you want to do. You know, your, your JM presses, your pull-ups, your overhead presses, whatever it is that you feel like is getting neglected. That's usually how I do it. I, I, I grind like one or two movements. I do them consistently almost every single day. I'll just kind of, I'll either do like deadlifts two, three days in a row, or I'll deadlift and I'll bench and I'll deadlift and I'll bench, something like that. But there's always a day where it's like, man, I'm just cooked. You know, I just need a day to do like curls, right? 
overhead triceps extensions, just the fun pump stuff like that. And you can still make it challenging and hit PRs and keep track of those PRs. You know, it's just progressive overload in every sense. Always progressing. Um, I'll be bulking with 3,750 to 4,250 calories. Currently weighing 196, cut from 209, thanks. So first of all, let me say this. So you cut from 209 and you deadlifted 640 and you squatted 525. I mean, it's pretty strong. You're a strong cat, Dustin, strong cat. Um, as for, you know, bulking with the 3750 to 4250 calories, I mean, for the most part, I don't think about, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I'll just, I mean, basically this is going to be the, the talking point here. This is a great comment from Dustin and it, it addresses a lot of topics. Like, um, and we're talking bulking. I just, I'm always trying to bulk, basically. I'm always just trying to get bigger. You get bigger, you get stronger. And then if there's ever a time to get lean and mean, it's easy, right? It's easy to get lean. I feel like it's hard to get big and thick and juicy. Uh, this is the whole bagel thing. The whole bagel thing is that bagels are so easy to eat. Bagels are so easy to eat. And they're readily, like the cinnamon raisin bagels. So I've gone through so many phases of like, uh, extreme bulking diets, like if you know, packs of pasta with butter, gallons of milk, right? Um, it, it typically tends to be the easiest thing, but the bagels is what's the easiest thing because, first of all, the gallon of milk. I mean, unless like if you're working, if you have a, a life, if you go to school or anything, you can't carry a gallon of milk around, and then you don't want to. I'll tell you right now, you don't want to chug a gallon of milk at night. Oh, I gotta finish my gallon, chug it, and then you piss a hundred times in the middle of the night, too. So it's like, it's gotta be throughout the day, but like the bagels are easy because it's just bread. You can have it anywhere. And like cinnamon raisin bagels don't need a spread or anything like that. So you literally just, just munch them. Just, you know what I mean? It's like busy, busy food. Like you can just, you can be busy and you can be eating bagels. You can be driving, you can be eating bagels. You can be talking on the phone, you can be eating bagels. You can be, you know, surfing the web, you can eat egg bagels. Or you can do anything and eat bagels because they're clean, they're easy, they're readily available. So like a pack of the Dave's Killer Bread Bagels, Cinnamon Raisin Bagels, I think it's like 1,300 calories. That's five bagels. Now 1,300 calories is peanuts, right? It's not, it's not enough. You're like, you can't bulk with that alone. But you got to think that there's your 13, there's 1,300 calories alone. Now if you eat 10, what is that, a baker's dozen? Baker's dozen? You got 2,600 calories. Now, you know, I don't care what size you are. Like you say, you're, you know, 195 pounds at the moment. That should be pretty good for maintenance. And then it's like, Everything else you eat, because you're not just going to eat bagels throughout the day, right? You're probably going to have some veggies. You're going to have some fruits. You're going to have whatever else you want. You're going to have some real food on top of that, too. Now, like, all that other food you're eating is, like, your typical day of whatever you would eat. But you don't have to be concerned about getting a giant surplus of calories in, because you already got that with easy bagel. And those bagel bites throughout the day, you know what I mean? So that's that's the reason that I think the bagels are so great, because it's like, listen, is it the, the greatest source of calories? Of course not, but it's just so easy to eat that you don't have to worry about, oh my God, okay, how many calories did I get in? Like, oh, I got to hit these calories today. It's like, no, as long as you're eating, like, you know, I, I don't know how, like how big and how fast you're trying to get, you know, like, but even if you ate five bagels, just one pack, super easy to do. I can do that in one sitting. That's 1300 calories. Now I'm pretty sure that just throughout the day eating normal food, I can easily eat like, you know, 1800 calories or something you know what i mean like that's already putting me what is that 1300 1800 tooth it's already over 3000 calories like so and that's like at the minimum so it's not really a struggle to bulk in that sense now i think when people make it too complicated is they're trying to like meals and all this kind of stuff not eat real food eat real food especially like vegetables and fruits and healthy stuff right eat garlic <laughs> eat real food but at the same time the bagels are just, it's, I'm telling you, dude, it's the easiest way. And then if you, if you want, I mean, when you start putting like spread butter or almond butter or peanut butter or jam or anything you want, now you're doubling the calories, easily doubling the calories. So now you could take those five bagels, which is 1300 calories, but you're putting, you know, peanut butter, almond butter on it. And now those five bagels alone already got you at over 3000 calories. It's just, it's that simple to, it's that simple to bulk. And I just wish I would have known that back when I was actually trying to like, when it's really important for me to get big when I was wrestling in college and I just couldn't eat enough. I was trying to eat, I ate a pound of chicken or whatever. I had a pound of ground beef. It's like, bro, it's not nearly enough calories. Like it's just, that's freaking stupid bro science. Like you gotta eat, eat these, you know, proteins are gonna get you big. It's like bullshit. Just, freaking carb up, bro. That's how you're going to get big.